Hey, what's up everybody? Dornell Data here from MortgageMarketingCoach.com coming at you with another episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast live on Facebook. And today we're going to talk about a really important topic that I think every mortgage professional should really have clarity on and should take ownership of in their business. And that's clarity around the difference between being proactive and reactive. The difference between being a technician where you're basically building a glorified job, trading time for money, being reactive all day versus building a real business that sets you free, where you're liberated to live in your gifts and your talents and your unique abilities, dancing in your strengths, doing what you love, doing what you do best and getting the best to do all the rest. Notice a stark contrast between those two ways of operating, right? Being proactive, building something that sets you free versus being reactive, just going through the motions like a hamster on a hamster wheel, have a glorified job trading time for money, getting you basically a paycheck, but not getting you a real business that sets you free. It's really enslaving you to the office ball and chain. You don't show up to work. You don't have a real business. It doesn't actually sustain you long term in your absence because it's about you. So with that in mind, Let's unpack this, shall we? Why don't we start off with the first question of the hour, which is what really is the difference between those two words, between being proactive versus reactive? What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of being proactive? You're probably thinking self-motivated. You're probably thinking being intentional. You're probably thinking having a plan and working the plan, right? Being proactive, having a blueprint, having an intention, a mission, a purpose, and then purposefully putting the building blocks together to fulfill that outcome. That's being proactive, right? Now, what about conversely, when we look at being reactive? What is that like? What's it like? What's it to be reactive? Well, you probably start to feel an immediate shift in energy, don't you? being harried, being stressed, being in crisis mode, putting out fires, having deadlines and time frames, uh, being like a chicken, chicken with your head cut off, running around all over the place, right? Just running around and being busy, but not necessarily being productive. Some of you can relate to this intimately, this experience of being harried, right? Where there's a whole lot of activity, but not necessarily a whole lot of productivity two totally different things, right? You can be busy, but not necessarily productive. You can have activity, but not necessarily productivity. And so being proactive is about being intentional around how you are investing your time. Notice the word invest versus spend or waste. Investing your time such that it's getting you towards your desired outcome. Why are you in your business? Why did you get into business to begin with? What is your outcome? What's your goal? What's your dream? What kind of building are you wanting to create? Could you imagine trying to build a building without a blueprint? Just kind of showing up with a hammer and some nails and some boards and just trying to wing it on the fly? Ludicrous, right? But that's how so many loan officers and mortgage professionals operate in their business. They're just flying by the seat of their pants, winging it literally every single day. And they wonder why after five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years, they're still scurrying around, getting nowhere in a rut of stagnation, bored as hell because it's the same old mundane routine day in and day out. Well, wonder no longer if you don't have a blueprint for what you're wanting to create for your business, for your life, you're just showing up, just going through the motions. And that doesn't create an extraordinary life. That just creates a glorified job. That's all it gives you. So if you're wanting to create an extraordinary life, an extraordinary business that sets you free, that allows you to op operate in your strengths, in your unique gifts and abilities, in your unique uh, talents, then you have to be intentional. And you know that to be true because chances are you've tried the reactive method. And as Dr. Phil would say, how well is that working for you so far? <laughs> chances are it ain't working so well, is it? So. That's the difference between being proactive versus reactive. And obviously, all of us want to be more proactive, don't we? Intuitively, we want to gravitate towards showing up to work with positivity, with poise, with power, with intentionality, with purposeful intention, and get stuff done and actually be productive and move forward and see progress. All of us want that, but somehow we get caught in this rut 
of being reactive. And even though we know it's not right, a lot of us have a hard time pulling out of that vortex. It just keeps sucking us into that vortex every day. Have you noticed? So how do we actually build a purposeful, intentional, productive, profitable business that actually sets us free? What's the mindset? What's the skill set? What's the strategy? Well, that's precisely what we're going to be talking about today. So you guys may have heard of the highly acclaimed book by Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And there's a great little diagram in there. You might want to Google it just to get more clarity on it, because for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to brush with broad strokes on this. But there's a great uh, diagram in there called the Time Management matrix. And it essentially gives you four quadrants in which we operate in. It doesn't mean we're always operating in just one quadrant. Sometimes we vacillate between these different quadrants. The first two are perhaps the areas that are most energetically invested in by you and I. So I'm going to invest most of our time unpacking the first two. The first quadrant, quadrant one, is the important but urgent. It's important and it's urgent. In other words, it's got to be done like now. So if you got issues with a loan, it's got to be handled now. The underwriter processor are on you like what on rice. They're chasing you down to make sure things get handled or you're doing the opposite. You're chasing them down to make sure these things get handled because if they don't get handled, you're losing the loan. That's called important and urgent, right? So this is really the world of being a technician, the chief cook and bottle washer wearing all the hats with deadlines, with uh, mission critical outcomes that need to be filled within a, a particular time frame. Uh, it has to be really about responding to requests within a timely fashion by clients, by realtors, by underwriters, etc. Sound familiar? Chances are this is the world you live in every day for the most part. Most loan officers, mortgage professionals live in this world called quadrant one. It's all about being reactive to demands, requests, uh, time frames, deadlines. It's all about the urgent and important. This is the world of reactive, being a technician in reaction mode. Okay. Quadrant two, conversely, is about being a very different type of business owner. Because as you can tell in quadrant one, you're not necessarily a business builder, are you? You're more of a technician. You're more of a practice builder. You're more working in the business all the time. And you're doing all the stuff that's required in the operations of your business. You're not necessarily being strategic, are you? You're not necessarily being visionary, are you? You're not necessarily building the blueprint, the high level strategic visionary blueprint, and then putting the pieces of the puzzle in place in terms of personnel, top talent, systems, team, policy, procedure, protocol, are you? All of that stuff lives in quadrant two. It's called the important, but not urgent. Notice strategy and building vision is not urgent. It's important, but not urgent. Working on your business instead of just in your business, it's important, but not urgent, you know, spending quality time with your family. It's important, but not urgent. Going to the gym and working out and maintaining a healthy, vital uh, you know, existence in the temple called your body is not necessarily urgent, is it? It's important, but not urgent. So all these things that create an extraordinary life and extraordinary business are all found in this realm of greatness, quadrant two, called important, but not urgent. And notice all of those encompass being proactive, planning your work in advance. It's important, but not urgent. Putting systems in place that work while you're not working. It's important, but not urgent. Building up your team, training your team, cultivating a winning team. It's important, but not urgent. Attracting top talent, recruiting top talent is important, but not urgent. Notice all the things that are required for the most part to build an extraordinary business that sets you free are all proactive elements within quadrant two called important but not urgent. 
And then of course, quadrant three and quadrant four in the time management, time management matrix, easy for me to say, time management matrix, all falls within trivial, the trivial many. It might be important, it might be urgent, but not important, or it might be not important and not urgent. Either way, it's all the trivial many stuff that you really don't wanna be spending any time on. You wanna be delegating or deleting or automating, okay? So our goal as business owners, our goal as business builders is to shift our mindset from being a practice builder who's reactive all day, working in the business, to being a business builder who's proactive as much as possible and building a real business that sets our free, sets us free, that allows our business to operate and thrive in our absence. That's our goal, right? I mean, think about how awesome it would be to have a business that runs and operates and thrives in your absence, where you can leave for a week or two weeks or three weeks and have it be doing better, more profitable, more productive in your absence than when you're in the office. I mean, how awesome would that be, right? I imagine you probably get juice just thinking about that because that's game changing for your life, right? Think about the difference that would make in terms of your ability to have those magical moments with the family, your ability to go on adventures with the family, travel with the family, your ability to do the things that really light your fire, that fire you up, that get you jacked and stacked, doing the stuff you love. So this is really an operation liberation where you can focus on doing the things that actually set you free. But notice there's a different, par it's a paradigm shift, isn't it? From being a technician where you're, you're the chief cook and bottle washer, wearing all the hats, doing all the heavy lifting yourself, and you're just scurrying around like a chicken with your head cut off, just trying to get it all done all day, every day, and just it's the daily grind versus orchestrating and constructing and building something that is sustainable in your absence. A very different paradigm, a very different daily modus operandi. Wouldn't you agree? So let's unpack this a little more. I'm gonna unpack seven keys to becoming a proactive business builder. Now this is coming from someone who's been in the game for you know, a while and has done it the hard way a long time in my career. I've been in the game uh, coaching mortgage professionals to success since 2004. It's been 14 years, friends. This has been a labor of love for over a decade. I'm a sucker for punishment. I just keep on doing it. And the reason for it is because I love helping people create breakthroughs. But one of the things that held me back is I didn't know the things that I'm about to share with you. And so I ended up chasing my tail, doing it the hard way, banging my head against the wall for a long time before I really locked in on these distinctions. And it wasn't until I started to implement these distinctions that my business took off, that I actually started to have freedom where I could go away for a week, two weeks, three weeks and have my business run without me, where I went from just making you know a meager existence to making seven figures. I mean, everything shifted once I started to put these pieces of the puzzle in place. So I promise you from personal experience, I'm not perfect at this stuff, guys. I learned the hard way with this stuff. I did it the hard way for way too long. I don't want that for you. I want you guys to learn it the smart way. I want you guys to do it the smart way, not the hard way. I want you guys to liberate yourself because the more you're liberated, the more you're gonna be free to be the greatest gift to humanity you can possibly be happy, fulfilled, operating in your strengths, bringing your God-given abilities to serve others in a meaningful way. And that's going to be like a spark that catches a fire, a whole nation where people are being liberated first because you became liberated and then your family becomes liberated and then your family's family becomes liberated and your kids, kids become liberated. And there's a whole new generational trajectory of posterity and prosperity and giftedness and freedom and joy and passion and purpose because you first grabbed a hold of this and you create a whole new legacy for generations to come because you blossom and bloom into the leader you're called to be and you're capable of being. Isn't that an awesome vision, an awesome possibility to behold? I don't know about you, I get fired up about that because it's not just about us, it's about the ripple effect and the wake we leave. When we take our last breath, what kind of impact is your life gonna make? And if you're anything like me, you want it to make a meaningful impact that lives way beyond your life, where people look back and say, that man or that woman was a difference maker, a difference maker in our family line. That man, that woman was a leader 
that made a difference for generations to come because who they were and the difference their leadership made in the lives of those they touched. I mean, how awesome would that be, right? That's what life's all about right there. That's the essence of life. So let's unpack these seven keys, shall we? Seven keys to becoming a proactive business builder versus a reactive hamster on the hamster wheel with a glorified job, a slave to the office ball and chain. You don't want that. You wanna be a proactive business builder that sets yourself free and your family free. Agreed? So the first key is cultivate a new identity, a new identity as a business builder versus a proactive, versus a practice builder rather. A new identity of being a business builder versus a practice builder. You see, rarely will the results in your life exceed that which you believe, you believe you're capable of and worthy of. Rarely in your life will your results, your leadership exceed your own identity. If you don't see yourself as a business builder, as someone who proactively builds businesses that sets one free, you will never achieve it because you don't see yourself that way. You see yourself as a technician, as a mortgage technician, grinding it out in the back room all day, every day. And as long as you see yourself that way, you will never break out of that mold. It starts by seeing yourself as a successful, liberated business builder doing what you love and imagining it and feeling it, immersing your a self energetically and spiritually in that vision as if it's already real. You've got to see yourself as a business builder before you become a business builder. You guys with me on that? So that's the first key. See yourself as a business builder. Cultivate the identity of being a successful business builder who builds a thriving business or businesses with top talent team, with systems, with policy, procedure, protocol, that allows you to build a thriving enterprise in your absence. You are the strategic force, you are the leadership force, but you're not the technician grinding it out, stirring pots in the back room all day. That's not you. You have a new identity now. You're a business builder now, not just a practice builder. You guys willing to take that on? How great does that feel, right? Roll your shoulders back and just drink that in. Drink that identity in. Doesn't that feel good? It's a whole new way of seeing life, a whole new way of seeing your business. Is it not? So that is key number one to being proactive and building a real business that sets you free. Key number two is make being proactive a priority in your daily calendar. See, if you just get around to it when you get around to it, when you feel like it, when you're in the mood, when all the stars align, it'll never happen. And if it does, it'll be short lived. Have you noticed? You actually have to make it a must. It's kind of like the same thing as getting fit, right? If you want to be fit and you're 50 pounds overweight and you just get around to going to the gym when you feel like it, you'll rarely be consistent with doing it, will you? Or if you want to get fit, but you only eat healthy when you feel like it, when you get around to it, when the stars align, chances are you're going to eat crap more often than not that's going to keep you fat, right? So the difference maker is when you shift it from it being a should to a must, where you just demand of yourself. You come to the point where you just say enough is enough, no more. I've had it. I'm done with being a technician who just sits here like a guinea pig on the guinea pig wheel trading time for money with a glorified job. Screw that. I've done that. I've been there, done that. I'm done with that. I didn't sign up for that program. I'm, not, I'm no longer willing to settle for that in my life, period. You just get to that perturbance and disturbance, br disturbance breaking point where you just say enough is a more enough. I freaking had it. I'm done with that. That's when your whole life changes. When you just raise your standards and you say, I'm done. I'm done. Proactive is the only way it's got to be. Does that mean you're proactive all day, every day? No, but you allocate a certain amount of time every day for being proactive, whether it be maybe an hour, two hours, three hours, you decide. You want to start with something you can commit to. So it might be half an hour. Maybe for, for you, half an hour is a breakthrough. Start with that. Or maybe it's an hour. For you, it might be an hour. One hour every day, starting in the morning, I'm going to have a sacred hour of power to work on my business, not just in my business. 
to set up policy, procedure, protocol, to get top talent team, and to engineer my business to set me free. One hour per day, that's five hours. A week, that's 20 hours. A month, that's over 200 hours a year allocated to actually orchestrating, engineering, and structuring a real business for yourself. So don't underestimate the power of one hour per day stacked upon the other, stacked upon the other. The compounding effect is enormous if you're consistent and you make it a must as opposed to a should. Does that make sense, guys? So make it a priority, make it a must. The third key to being proactive and building a real business that sets you free is to protect yourself from the inevitable distractions because you gotta be knowing they're gonna be coming at you, whether it be unannounced interruptions where people barge into your office because you didn't lock the door, you need a lock on your door, friends. You need a lock on your door. If you have people interrupting you daily because they just walk into your office, you need to get yourself a lock or get at least a little hanger that says, do not disturb on your doorknob, okay? Or maybe it's inbound calls where you don't have a system like a voicemail that tells people, hey, during this time and this time, I'm in client meetings or between this time and this time, uh, I'm you know not available due to client interactions. You could treat yourself as your own first client. The first fruits of your clients is you. Give yourself your own first fruits by treating yourself as the most sacred client you, you could ever commit to. Why not? When people hit the voicemail, when you're having a meeting with you, they don't know any different. They don't know you're having a meeting with you. They, they think that you're a very highly sought after, very successful mortgage professional because you're actually in a meeting with a client. Well, go figure. Do you think everyone has to have a phone answered immediately? That's great if you can. If you have a receptionist, by all means, get one. Get a receptionist if you can. If you can afford to get a receptionist, get one. But until and unless you have a receptionist, don't be afraid to have an hour per day where it hits voicemail, voicemail, voicemail. Because if you don't, you're going to continually be distracted, disrupted, and derailed from that sacred hour of power. Does that make sense? So make it a sacred time, make it in the morning, and then set uh, all kinds of guardrails and borders and high walls around that time. So no amount of interruptions or distractions are going to derail you. For one hour, you put the blinders on. You can let your business go to hell in a handbasket for the rest of the day. But for that one hour of power, you are focused like a laser beam on exactly what you pre-intended to do during that time. And it's not just working in your business. I'm talking about working on it, setting up the systems, the policy, procedure, protocol, personnel. So your business day by day is getting stronger, more fortified, more structured, more systematized. So it actually works in your absence. So an hour of power per day, guard it, make it sacred, make it a mandatory must. And that requires you to proactively guard against distractions. Put your phone on vibrate, turn off all the notifications on your phone, turn off all the notifications on your computer, put the blinders on just for one hour. That's what it takes to be a top producer, friends. You've got to discipline yourself to be focused like a laser beam for at least one hour per day, ideally two hours, ideally three hours. The more focused time you spend on productive, high-level, strategic, fruitful, profitable activities, the faster your business will take off like a rocket ship. Focus is always the prerequisite to breakthrough results. Laser beam focus. Does that make sense, guys? Now, the... Next thing you guys want to consider, the fifth key to building a real business and being proactive is build a team that liberates you so you can operate in your unique ability, your strengths, so you can do what you do best and get the best to do all the rest. So you can proactively focus more of your time in your unique ability. So every new team member you have, whether it be a marketing assistant, whether it be a processor, an underwriter, a loan officer assistant, whatever, every new person on your team is freeing you up more and more to work in your unique ability, your strengths, your unique gifts and talents, so you can dance in your strengths, doing what you love. You do what you do best, 
and get the best to do all the rest. And notice because they're top talent in the area you're having them operate, they're also working in their unique ability. So your team is working in their unique ability, dancing in their strengths. That frees you up to operate in your unique ability, dancing in your strengths. Everyone is working in their own respective unique ability. Everyone's being liberated. Everyone's being energized and everyone's freeing each other up to be harnessing and leveraging gifts, talents, and abilities to get optimal results. Doesn't that inspire you? I don't know about you, but that fires me up. Having a business where everyone's working together towards a common goal, a common vision, working in their own respective gifts, talents, and abilities, and freeing each other up so you all are operating in your A game. Doesn't that sound like that dream business you've always wanted? Well, that's precisely what it takes to make it real. You gotta liberate yourself by building that team. And the sixth key to building a real business that sets you free is to build the policy procedure protocol and systems in place. You've gotta have a systems-based business, not a you-based business. So that's where automation comes in. That's where having uh, operations manual comes in. That's where having those policy and procedures come in so that when you're not around, the team and the entire structure of your business actually has rails in which the wheels of your business can run in. If you don't have those rails established, it'll just meander off track the moment you leave because you're not there to babysit it, right? That's how businesses become big businesses because they have those systems in place. So how do those systems get put in place? You actually have to intentionally install them. They don't just happen by accident, do they? You have to to actually build it. Just like you would build a house where you have an architect build a a blueprint, and then you have the general contractor leading the team of technicians, building it, putting it all together from framing it to the electrical, to the plumbing, to the siding, to the roofing and all that. Those are all the respective technicians. They all work together towards that common cause of building that structure. So you have to have the blueprint, then you have to start to put the piece of the puzzle and you need the leadership and you need the personnel and everyone's working in their unique ability to build that structure, but you need to have the blueprint. The blueprint is the systems, the policy procedure and the overall vision of the company. And you have to bring that to it. It doesn't happen by accident, does it? And lastly, the seventh key to building a thriving and profitable proactive business that sets you free, that liberates you, a real business that sets you free, is finding and seeking out good mentors. Finding and seeking out top talent mentors, coaches who can help point out your blind spots, who can help you condense timeframes and shorten learning curves and turn decades into days and help you to see stuff you wouldn't see otherwise and to give you a proven plan, a proven blueprint to help you get results faster, easier, better than you would ever get on your own. I'm telling you, I spent so much time and energy and money doing it the hard way, just struggling, spinning my wheels, winging it, flying by the seat of my pants, hoping, wishing, praying I could figure it out on my own. I spent so much time and so much money doing it the hard way because I didn't seek out mentors sooner. I kept telling myself the excuse, I can't afford it. I need to make some more money and then I'll be able to afford it. No, screw that. I should have been telling myself the opposite. I can't afford not to have a great mentor. I can't afford not to seek out a great mentor. I can't afford not to invest in a great mentor because that's the whole reason why I'm struggling because I don't have a proven plan because I don't have proven systems, because I don't have that guidance and support and mentorship in my life. That's precisely why it needs to be a must now as opposed to someday. That's the way I should have been thinking, but I didn't think that way for a long time. That's why I struggled for a long time. That's why I had too much month at the end of the money for a long time. That's why I was over-promising and under-delivering to my family for a long time. That's why I was stressed out and spinning my wheels and getting way underpaid for a long time because I had that mindset until I just finally decided, screw it, let's freaking do it. I invested in my mentorship, in my coaches, in my consultants, in my the people that I knew had the results I wanted to have. And I said, screw it, let's do it. I invested in them to teach them, teach me their ways. And within a very short period of time, I went from six figures to seven figures like that. Why? Because I had that proven plan. And because I had the coaching and the mentorship, they revealed the blind spots. They revealed the stuff I didn't see in myself. And they give me the insight, the wisdom, the discernment, and the proven plan and the structure and the support to help me win at the highest level. 
So I encourage you guys to pour gasoline on the fire and don't settle for second best by just winging it. That doesn't work. If that worked, you'd already have your breakthrough. If that worked, what you're doing would already be getting you where you want to be, would it not? So clearly it doesn't work. As Dr. Phil would say, like I said before, how well is that working for you? Winging it, trying to do it on your own. So if you guys would like to find out how I can be of support to you, if you'd like to get more clarity on where you are now, where you'd like to be, and how we can possibly help you get there, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough coaching call with myself or one of my staff, one of my consultants, by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. We'll hop on a call for one hour. We'll unpack what's going on in your business, what's working, what's not working, where you at, where you want to be, how can we help you get there. If we can help you get there, by all means, we will show you how. And if not, frankly, we will be the very first people to advise you to pass on our services. Either way, you're going to leave the call with massive value, massive clarity, and we'll have some fun. Cool? So there you have it, guys. There are some keys. I've just given you seven keys to being proactive to build a real business that sets you free. This is Doran Aldana for MortgageMarketingCoach.com coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And now it's time to go forth, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action. Chances are you will get massive results. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for hanging with me. Be awesome. Keep being awesome. I'm blessed to have the opportunity to serve you, and I'm looking forward to reconnecting very, very soon. Have a great one, guys. Peace.